洗涤西方民主。It's only since 1945 that this tradition of Western democracy has established itself as, you know, predominant. But now that's going into reverse. We can see across the West、uh, new dangerous political tendencies in an authoritarian、uh, direction. Martin Yaque. 英国剑桥大学政治与国际研究系前高级研究员做客《风云对话》，深度探析西方民主的历史与现实近年来，美国共和党与民主党的较量愈演愈烈。无论是国会山骚乱，还是联邦调查局突击搜查海湖庄园，都让美国深陷政治极化和社会撕裂中。专家分析认为，随着中期选举临近，美国党派斗争和民意对立或将引发更多难以预料的冲突。而早在十多年前，马丁·雅克就曾预见这一现象。马丁·雅克。英国著名学者、作家，曾长期担任英国剑桥大学政治与国际关系高级研究员、伦敦经济学院亚洲研究中心的高级客座研究员。二零零九年，他出版的《当中国统治世界》成为全球范围内现象级畅销书，被翻译成十五种语言，累计销量超三十五万册。二零一九年三月，中文修订版更名为《大国雄心》。本期风云对话，马丁·雅克线上接受采访，与我们进行了一场关于国际秩序的深度访谈。Good morning, Dr. Jakes. It's、uh, great to have you on our show. The U.S. will hold the 2022 midterm elections and the 2024 presidential elections. And Biden described Trump as a threat to democracy, and Trump called Biden the enemy of the state. What do you think of the America's political? Fragmentation. I think it's、um, very serious. I think the reasons for it are a profound existential crisis in the United States about what it is and what its future is, and a deep concern about what is perceived as the decline of America. The decline of the, the relative decline of America in the world, and that is why someone like Trump could get elected in 2016. And、uh, I think the the, the results of that、um, is that、um, America is uh, uh, becoming increasingly divided about its future. What does that mean? Two things. One. American democracy, as we have known it, is under threat, probably for the first time. And secondly, more imponderably, the unity of America is probably、uh, under threat. Why do you say American、Scars、democracy the... is under threat? Well,、uh, I mean, January the sixth, the、uh, the insurrection in Washington D.C. Um, the refusal by Trump and now the great majority of Republicans to accept that Biden's election was legitimate. Western democracy does depend on a consensus whereby the competing forces accept、uh, that if they lose, the, legit- the, the legitimacy of the other side has to be respected. When that breaks down. Then democracy begins to break down. Now, you can see this is only the, the beginnings, but it's the beginning. It's potentially the beginnings of a process. So, if you get, for example, a situation where, you know, well, Tr- Trump wanted to carry on, didn't he? Well, when you go down that road, then democracy begins to the fundamental characteristics, necessities, prerequisites of democracy begins to break down, and at the same time, so does the unity of the country. That can lead potentially. That can lead to civil war. This is a very serious situation. I mean, we're not now. It's not inevitable that America will take this path, but 
The reasons why it's gone down this route now quite quickly is because America feels increasingly uncomfortable with its with itself and what it is and what's happening to it in the world and how to respond to it. These are very, is very there, important Is there a questions. way out? Yeah, there's always a way. I mean, the, the, I, I'm not saying what, what I'm talking about is inevitable. It, I don't think it is inevitable. Uh, but it's a trend. America clearly needs uh, to, uh, in some degree or other, political system and American society, I think, with, as it loses its hegemony in the world, will need to reinvent itself or it will go down a more oppressive uh, and uh, aggressive path. Uh, I'm not, and I don't think either are inevitable. Dr. Jakes, you once said that no form of governance has or will last indefinitely. And there are multiple signs that Western democracy is losing its popularity. In what ways do you think Western democracy is in trouble and why? Look at recent election results, Trump, was elected as American president in 2016, uh, lost in the last presidential election, but in 2024, he might win again, or someone like him might but might win again. The new Italian government is a, the biggest uh, force, 25% a quarter, of the popula a quarter of the voters have voted for a neo-fascist party. Um, in Sweden, which has you know, been an absolute bulwark of Western democracy, uh, since the Second World War, um, the largest party in the new coalition is uh, a, a sort of ex-Nazi party. If you look at uh, various other countries in uh, uh, Scandinavia, they often they also have very far right elements within those governments. I think not, maybe not in all cases, but in the majority. Um, the, the French election twice now, the contestant, the, the losing contestant, has been Le Pen. Uh, who is from the very far right uh, within France. So what you can see building up in Europe is a strong anti-democratic force. And I think that it's not inevitable, but what's happening is because Europe's been declined, because Europe has faced, is facing a lot of problems, there's a lot of disillusionment with the traditional political parties with the political traditional political systems a, a dissatisfaction and a turn to the right there's a bit of a turn to the left as well but there's met the main turn is to the right and we've got to remember before the second world war democracy was a minority uh, in in europe um and it's only since 1945 that this tradition of western democracy has established itself as you know predominant and, and indeed uh, almost exclusive in European governments. But now that's going into reverse. So I think that uh, we can see across the West uh, new dangerous political tendencies in an authoritarian uh, direction. Uh, I won't say in a fascist direction, I think that would be an exaggeration, but certainly in an anti-democratic direction. For a long time, we told ourselves that American democracy is guaranteed but it's not. I think we have a big crisis of democracies, of what I would call liberal democracies. 2021年12月2日，中外学者谭明主高端对话会在北京举行。马丁雅克在发言中阐述了中西方历史文化的不同，并强调西方民主的并结在于一直认为其政治模式具有普世性，不考虑历史背景与文化差异，而依照这样的理
uh, the European European settlers. They fought the um, Native Americans. They stole their land, and they stole the land, not least by the use of the gun, by firearms. Um, and uh, but they've all uh, Americans. A lot of Americans. I mean, they regard it as a you know a, a, a absolute con a fundamental constitutional right, the right to bear arms against whoever they don't like and part of that you know because america has always been antipathetic to government uh, not least they regard especially if you're on the american right the government to be a big problem so the the roots of this tradition i mean i think the rest of the world most of the rest of the world finds it inexplicable but it, it is explicable in terms of american history二零二二年十月三日在审议过程中，联合国专家称，美国在几乎所有涉及种族正义的问题上都失败了。We see shootings and abuse of African Americans by American policemen. This happens quite often in the press, and racial discrimination is also quite common in law enforcement in the U.S. And color has obviously played a major role in determining the fate of many Americans. Why do you think this is the case? The United States is problematic in two ways. First of all, um, let's be frank about it. Um, America was, modern America, the United States of America, America was created by essentially the near elimination of the native population. How do we come to terms with that? How does America come to terms with that? What is the legacy of that in terms of America today? And I think this is greatly under discussed issue, but I think it is really important. And the second is of course, slavery. Um, the arrival of the transporting, uh, the theft of Africans and their, uh, with the AA, not least of Britain, um, uh, and, the, uh, and, the, uh, and the arrival of a very large number of American slaves and uh, of, of, Afri uh, of what became African American, uh, uh, African Americans, but in then was, were African slaves. And this remains still absolutely fundamental to the nature of American society. You go to America. And you can see how black people are treated. They are underprivileged. Violence is used against them in a way that's not used against white people. Imprisonment, I mean, if you look at the statistics for the uh, incarceration uh, in prison of different ethnic groups, <laughs> black prisoners are entirely disproportionate in their number uh, compared uh, with whites. So this is a profound problem and it's a reminder you know history history lasts a long time so the, what happened to the native americans what is happening to african americans is a result of history and it's a huge problem and it's uh and you can see uh that it remains a major for a, a major source of polarization uh in the united states you see trump you can see in the language of Trump, he's appealing to whites against blacks. This was part of his, of his political appeal and remains it. And one of the reasons for his the support for him amongst large sections of whites has been 
uh, this intimation against or explicit or very explicit uh, sometimes against uh, African Americans. Um, so this is this is a deep problem for the United States, and it's uh, and it it, uh, it lives on, and it's going to live on for a long time. There's not an easy solution, so it's a, a constant source of battle. Um, it may, and it's it, it uh, uh, perhaps it still remains the biggest dividing line with the, within the United States. Um, you know, remember the Civil War, and you can see some of those divisions being recreated in the United States today. 美国目前约有三百一十个原住民保留地，面积约占美国领土面积百分之二点三。保留地多位于偏远且贫瘠的地方，生存条件差，缺乏水和其他重要资源。根据美国印第安人健康服务局发布的报告，美国印第安人预期寿命比美国人平均寿命低五点五岁。新冠肺炎疫情期间，印第安人的弱势地位进一步凸显。另有民调结果显示，超过三分之一的美国原住民曾在工作场所遭遇漠视、暴力、羞辱和歧视。And this is not just a problem that we see in the U.S. The、uh, problem with indigenous people in many Western countries are often seen as the invisible groups or disappearing races. And how do you view? The issue of indigenous peoples continuing to face discrimination in many parts of the Western world. Well, exactly what I say. I mean, you know, how you're created, how you're born, how you 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 grow,、uh, isn't something which just disappears with the passage of time. On the contrary, it's it, 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 the legacy of of those those forms of discrimination and repression live on into the present. You know the thing is that if you look at European expansion、uh, over the last sev several centuries, was、um, colonization of、uh, you know by Britain, France,、uh, and and others across the world. This was the age of European expansion, and part of that European expansion was the destruction, effective or near destruction, of the native peoples of these countries. The United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand were built on white immigration. Why is the United States predominantly white? I mean, historically it wasn't. Why is Australia, a big island, big island continent、uh, in the Pacific, why is why is the most of the population white? Because of white settlement, the European expansion. It was a product of European expansion, and the peoples who were oppressed. For example, the Australian original population they've got some of the same problems as African Americans. I mean, they they've been discriminated against. They're con constantly discriminated against. They've been demoralised. They've been defeated. So therefore, there's big problems of、uh, mental health, of、um, of、uh, alcoholism, of drug taking, and so on. Because why? Because they've been repressed for so long. And this is true. All the, all the recent stories about what happened to the Canadian First Nation pop,、uh, population, same kind of problems.、Um, so this is a very big problem. 二零二二年六月二十七日，美国执法人员在德州圣安东尼奥市一辆被遗弃的卡车内发现超五十人死亡，这是美国历史上偷渡移民丧生人数最多的一次。二零二二财年。美国执法部门在美国墨西哥边境逮捕非法移民突破两百万人次大关，刷新二零二一财年创下的纪录。随着涌入边境的移民人数上升，美国两党就如何应对危机互相指责。共和党籍的德州州长阿伯特指责拜登政府不作为，无法确保边境安全。民主党斥对方是玩政治游戏。与此同时，据美媒报道，美国的国土安全部与白宫也因此矛盾升温。Why do you think this immigration crisis at this border keeps intensifying? Mexico is a very large country. It's much more backward than the United States.、Um, there is a great deal of poverty in Mexico, so there's a, 
uh, there's a great deal of unemployment. So there's a great desire, you know, United States just over the border. Um, there's a great desire to uh, escape from that poverty um, and those problems uh, and seek a better future in the United, in the United States. We've got to remember that, you know, the states that border on uh, Me Mexico were originally Mexican. I mean, it, they were taken they were taken by America in the uh, uh, U.S.-Mexican War. So the roots of this go back a, long, a, a very long way. Um, and of course, there are now a lot of Hispanic uh, uh, people living, particularly in that part of the United States. So culturally, um, they feel uh, relatively comfortable uh, uh, with that. And they can see relatives, extended family, ancestors, and so on, who've made a, a good future in the United States. Then, of course, there's the American reaction, the white, the kind of Trumpian reaction, you know, build a wall, keep them out, you know, we don't want them here, and a nervousness, you know, about the growing numbers, the growing proportion of Americans who are Hispanic. And how do you think this affects the American society? I think that amongst American whites, uh, it, it varies, of course, there's many, many different people people who make up the white population. So we shouldn't overgeneralize here, but there is a concern about progressive numerical uh, decline of the white population. Um, uh, and it's not just, that's not just about African-Americans, but actually uh, the Hispanic population is also, is rather larger. So there's a, you know, there's a possibility Prob a probability that at some point uh, the white population will uh, become a minority of the United States. And that's, that's something which many whites, I think, probably find difficult to countenance.为应对能源危机但并非所有欧盟成员国都认可制裁俄罗斯。匈牙利就曾多次在欧盟成员国会议上动用自己的一票否决权，拖慢欧盟制裁俄罗斯的进度。目前，在二十七个欧盟成员国中，有十几个对
The problem with economic sanctions, which are crucial, is that beyond the point they haven't worked, because too many countries around the world, non-Western countries, have decided to take Russian oil and, Rus and Russian gas in some cases as well. So it's so the economic sanctions have not weakened uh, Europe, uh, have not weakened Russia in the way that they anticipated. Now, I think we still, we don't know the end of this story yet, but I think that um, uh, uh, one possibility is that uh, European, some European countries will carry on, uh, will seek to get, uh, continue with supplies from Russia and others won't. Britain's not in a, such a serious situation, it's in a serious situation, but not sort of such a serious dependency uh, as the case of, of Germany. So I think that one of the things this says to us is, is that um, the West does not command the world. It does not have the authority in the world that it did before. Because in the old days, probably they could have, you know, they would have, the sanctions would have bitten and prevented this situation. But again, you know, this crisis speaks to the kind of Western influence in the world, including in re relationship to crucial question uh, like um, energy supplies. Uh, in the longer run, of course, it, it will hasten the development of non-fossil fuels, wind power, uh, 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 solar power, uh, uh, electrical power, and so on. I mean, th it, this will hasten investment and development of these that 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 is one of the effects it's going to have um in the short run what happened with the ukraine crisis was to strengthen the western alliance around america no question about that there was a big strengthening western europe stood shoulder to shoulder with the united states in the longer run i'm not so sure that's going to be the case because i think it points to the difference in interests and positions of the United States on the one hand and many West Euro European countries on the other.